Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Limits of Ferrite Core Effectiveness in Switch Mode Converters. Manufacturers of magnetic cores provide us with this type of plots in which we have different ferrite materials. Here it is, 3F3, no, 3F4, 396. And here we have on the x-axis frequency and here the so-called figure of merit F times B max. Of course this is for one manufacturer but this is ferrous cube but other manufacturer will provide us with similar information. The purpose of this presentation of this video is to explain why is it that we are interested in this product and then why is it that we have a peak here for each one of the materials we see that there is an increase and then eventually it reaches sort of a highest value and then it starts to go down so this figure of merit has a maximum and then it drops off at the given frequency depending on the material so these are the two objectives of this video let me start off with the question of why are we interested in this product the area product of a core that is the product of the cross-section area of the core here it is times the window area or winding area here it is is a measure of the size of the core and it turns out that it is a function of these parameters this will be for a transformer driven by a symmetrical square wave with a certain duty cycle what we see here is that the area product is equal to the voltage, duty cycle, RMS current. Let me go to J, which is the current density in the wires with we wind the core. And K is the packing. K1 means that we can fill all the window with copper, with wires, which is impossible, of course. Always there are some voids. And the K is a measure of the voids, like K1 is full copper and normally k will be a smaller number like 0 0.7 0 0.5 depending of uh, insulation and some other parameters of the windings and then we have this product so obviously we see that the area product which is a measure of the core is proportion inversely proportional to fb max and obviously the larger this value the smaller will be the core so we can understand this very clearly for the transformer. In the inductor, we have a similar expression for the area product, only that here we have the inductance, peak value, RMS, and B max, J and K as before. Now again, this is for AC excitation, no DC. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Now in switch mode converters, the inductance is a function of frequency. The, highest, the higher the frequency, the lower the inductance that you need for the inductor. And therefore, I can rewrite this expression in this form. Again, these are dependent on the design, the electronic design of the converter. And here we have again this product. So again, AP is inversely proportional to this figure of merit. So this is why this figure of merit is important. And we would like it to be as large as possible. That is, we'd like to choose a material that has this highest value for FB max at the frequency range that we are interested in. So here are these curves. And let me just point out that these curves are given for a given power dissipation level of the core. That is, all these curves are for the case of 500 milliwatt per centimeter cube of core ferrite, of the ferrite core. Okay? And the next question that I'm going to address is why is there a peak here? That is, as the frequency goes up, obviously the product goes up, but as it turns out, and we'll see it in a minute, as the frequency goes up, 
you can allow a lower B max to maintain this power dissipation level. So as you go up with the frequency, B max has to be reduced and there is a certain value of the product for any given frequency given this limit of 500 megawatt per centimeter cube. So let's have a look at this question and understand why is there a peak here. So the point to start is the so-called Steinmetz equation. Now Steinmetz have actually developed an equation from theoretical basis. This is not exactly what he expressed in his paper, but this is the form that is now used by core manufacturers or ferrite core manufacturers. And this is used for fitting data, the measured data of the core loss as a function of frequency and excitation of flux density, B is the magnetic flux density. Now in this equation, F is in Hertz, T is in Tesla, and P is in kilowatt per meter cube or milliwatt per centimeter cube, which is of course the same. Now, starting with V equal to N defeated T, we find that the B as a function of time, magnetic flux density as a function of time, is a function of the voltage excitation, uh, this would also be sinusoidal, of course, if the voltage is, is sinusoidal, and this is actually the peak value of B. This is the B hat. Here we have the peak B hat is the peak value of this excitation. All measured data available today, at least, is for sinusoidal excitation. So the manufacturer is exposing the core to a sinusoidal excitation of magnetic flux density, which is done, of course, by exposing it to a voltage. And then the core loss is measured and the data is then fitted to this equation. This is what is actually done and this is the data that is available in the data sheets. However, things are not that simple. It turns out that all these coefficients are not constant. They are dependent on the frequency range. You see alpha and beta here are depend, for example, for 3, 4, 3 F4, uh, depending on the frequency range, these are different numbers. Moreover, the whole thing is a function of temperature. So uh, recently, uh, manufacturers started to fit this K to a polynomial in temperature, temperature 9 centigrade, and here are the coefficient. So the things that are really not that simple, and to extract the product of F times B for a given uh, power level, you cannot do it analytically because this is not a constant equation, it, it's just a varying uh, with temperature and with the frequency. So the thing to do is really to go back to the actual measurement of the manufacturer. And here is the data that manufacturers are giving for the power loss of the core. This is again in kilowatt meter cube or milliwatt per centimeter cube. And here is now the excitation. This is B hat, the AC magnetic flux excitation, AC. And this is the peak value, and here is the core loss, and these are straight lines for the various frequencies. Now the reason why they are straight line is because in any given range of frequency, this is the equation that is fitted to, and in a log-log scale, an exponential equation, of course, becomes a straight line. So this is not replotting this equation. This is the original data fitted to straight lines. So now we can sort of reconstruct this plot. And I'm looking now at 3F4. This is 3F4. And I'm talking about the limit of 
500 milliwatt per centimeter cube. This is here. This is 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 milliwatt. And now the cross crossing here between frequency and this value is the B that I'm looking for. And then I multiply it by the frequency. So each point here is the frequency, here is the frequency, times B hat for this power level. Here it is. So I've done it for all these. Here it is. This, these are the numbers for these crossings here. Okay. And now I go back on this plot. These are the F times, this is the F times B, okay? Now, this is in milli Tesla here, so I've converted it to Tesla. And I've replotted on this curve, and lo and behold, of course, I'm getting back, as expected, what the manufacturer is giving us. Well, there's some deviation because this is just, I got the numbers by just eyeballing uh, the values. So it's pretty good fit, and this explains it. So what we are actually seeing here is that say this frequency, which is say about one and a half, 1.5 megahertz, which is about here, uh, you'll get the highest product of frequency, frequency here, times B hat. So this would be the optimum uh, place to use this particular core. Now this is not the best of the cores. You see that there are some for any given frequency, you see there are some better material. So this is a very good way of selecting uh, the material uh, for an application and for a given power level to choose the lowest core volume or size. But things are not that simple and they are more complicated in fact. Now, this curve is given for 500 milliwatt and for 100 degrees centigrade. As we have seen, all the losses are function of temperature. And also, for given power level, these may also change. Now, temperature affects the losses pretty much. You see here, this is just curves for given frequency and B hat over temperature and you see quite a bit of a change. For example, in this particular case, say 500 kilohertz and uh, 50 millitesla, you see quite a bit of a change. And the, it's not the same for uh, all combinations here. So it's not simple and uh, it's really very hard to get a accurate estimate of the power loss of the core but this is certainly a very good start uh, to begin with and then you can iterate on it by looking at this curve uh, to find out the, uh, a better estimate of the power loss. And then there is another issue that I like to clear here. There is a confusion between B max and B hat and I like to clear it out. In this plot here, it says B max. This is really not B max. This is B hat. B hat is for a sinusoidal excitation the maximum value. And this is the situation, or these are the conditions that the manufacturer is using to get the loss data. It is done with an AC with no DC in the core or in the winding. Now, in case of inductors, this is the B max as a result of the current within the core. Now, B max is this value here, this is the maximum value. However, the AC excitation, the magnitude, is not B max. It is, I call it B hat, this is the AC excitation. Again, the measurement we're done with AC, with no DC. This is with DC and triangular waveform. We don't have good information about losses with triangular waveform, so we use, we estimate it as a sinusoidal waveform. And the important thing to realize is that the loss is a function of this deviation, not of this max. Of course, DC will affect losses. That is, all the curves that cha will change with DC biasing. 
but we really don't have good information about that and the best we can do is to assume that this is about constant. So one has to be very careful because in the case of inductor you are talking about B max here which is indeed this value this is for a p while for losses you have to talk about b hat and not uh, b max because the losses are a function of the ac excitation so this brings me to the end of this presentation i hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much